Okay, our onions that we bought for last year, or got from last year, are starting to sprout. Sprout. Yeah, I was wanting to say go to seed, but that's not the right word. Anyhow, so we're doing a little experiment here. She's cutting off all of the outer parts, and we're going to dry that to preserve it. And then we're going to take this and plant it, because it's got roots on the bottom, and it's got the stem on top. And come later this year, I'll show you what happens. Well, here we are in the greenhouse. These are actually carrots here. I don't know how well you can see those. I'm getting some light on my thing there, but these were grown, planted last fall, overwintered. They died back. Then I put them back in here, and now they're coming back up. I'm kind of curious to see what I get. But I got some, quite a bit of other stuff started. And the main thing in here that I'd like to point out is I started with this soil for starting. And me and this stuff does not get along. I've had to transplant everything out of that soil because the plants come up, they look great. And then a week later, they start wanting to die off. I gave them fertilizer like I said it needed. It seemed like I couldn't get enough fertilizer into them without burning them so I just I gave up I've transplanted them all into a, a regular potting soil this stuff has no f no plant food in it nothing it is just I guess cocoa shell and I'm not impressed at all I probably won't use it again uh, here's some radishes in the big pot and lettuce that's coming up sporadically I'm gonna put up my heat mats the coldest part of starting plants is over and that's well it's going in the greenhouse uh, things were we're going pretty good I got some tomatoes here that are really taken off here as you can see here um, I don't know what is that mortgage lifter now see this board here I made this board because these things kept these would tip over and fall out as I was carrying them so I made this board here, one of my projects here in the past week, and I just set these down in here. Now when I move them, they don't tip at all. Oddly enough, I didn't have any problem with the big ones. I haven't had to make a board for it, but... So, I think this board will get reused every year, and I really like it. I think I really... Yeah, I might make a few more as time goes by. These smaller containers are working real good. This one here, look at this plant here. This is a... Uh, Tomatillo. Look at that thing. Boy, it's taking off like crazy. So, anyhow, that's it for the greenhouse for right now. Let me go see what else we okay, can do. Uh, okay, so out you. here, I've been making some more beds. I've got to get around and go get the stuff to make the soil and put the soil in. But as I'm trying to expand and expand and become a complete um, food forest in my backyard. I've been getting those built. I've got two more scheduled for this year, and then next year I'll build some more. Now this year I also have grown or planted, there's those onions I was showing you that I, she was drying and I used the center cores and planted them. They seem to be taking off all right. But in my gardener did a thing about plants you could grow with snow on the ground, and so I've tried it, and this is radishes and down here are these little bitty plants down there that's beets and then spinach and it's all come up really good i never had a lot of luck with these three types of lettuce there uh, mainly head type lettuce and now i got like three rows of them and they're all coming up just really great so maybe i was trying to grow them in too hot a weather uh rest of this stuff here I'm getting ready to prep these beds for spring, but we still got six weeks till you can put warm crops in. Over here, though, I did put in some cabbages because they were in that soil and not doing well. And you can see I've lost one there. I may lose that one there. But I'm just going to direct seed whatever I lose here. There's some more of them onions over there in that edge there. And, uh... That's it on this one. One of my projects this week was to build this mason beehive here. Um, 
I read somewhere where I saw a video where they said that if you put this pine needles in here, the ladybugs would like to nest in there. Same thing with the pine cone, little bugs uh, will get in there. But this is for the mason bees because I've been told that, or saw a video that they were talking how much more pollination you would get on your uh, vegetable plants and what have you if you had the mason bees here so I drilled this one out of an old just a piece of stump there and I used a 5 16 drill and went six inches deep this is seven so they didn't come through the bottom and I built that and it took about a half a day that drilling took a while I actually had to use a shorter drill to start and then I'd go to the long drill because my long drill wasn't really that sharp even though it's fairly new but that's the way it goes anyhow so that was a fun project I might make a couple more here before the summer's over not that I can use them after the spring they won't uh, use them they'll only use them in the spring I guess from what I read I've also been putting in trees I ordered some trees this is a a, a peach or no take it back I'm not growing peach yet. This is a pear tree. Peach pear? I don't know. This is a pear. And then uh, these here are, if you can see that. See there, that's a. Uh, currants. My wife had been from England, or having spent time in England. She got to where she liked currants. This is a plum tree, Santa Rosa plum. This is my raspberries. This is a goji berry bush here that I just put in. And then the, here's another uh, Santa Rosa plum. And I put the rocks around them so I don't hit, hit them with the mower or the weed eater because I did take one of my uh, raspberries out last year with a weed eater and it never came back. I was really rather disappointed. And over here I have uh, fig, I got another fig coming in, and I'll put that where this other rock is. And I probably maybe put a couple of more down through here. I can't get too close though, because this is my lateral lines here. So I'm trying to maintain at least 12 feet from them. And there's all my girls. Well, not all of them, a couple of them. I guess the rest are under the coop or in the coop. I also, here in the back corner here, of course, you can see all the brush I have to deal with after taking one of my big branches down. I'm trying to get all these stupid Chinese elms out of here. It just hadn't really been a very good winter for it this year. Uh, these are all elderberry. These are two I just bought uh, to go with these five here a friend of mine gave me. And uh, hopefully those will take off this year. And here in a second we'll be up here and look at the grapes. Okay, so here's some grapes. This is uh, Concord here. And you notice the thing I have a lot of is rocks and pine needles. Of course, when you have a big old pine tree like that, and I actually have two of them, then you do, see there's the other one, have a lot of pine needles. So this is Thompson's uh, grapes here. So those are all in. I've got to clean up this area here. I've been getting straightened up. Pine cones is another thing I have an abundance of. Anyhow, that's what I've been doing here on the mini stead here in the last week or two. Things are sure turning green here. Here, I'll, uh, I'll take you over here and show you my herb garden. So here is my herb garden. I guess the wife said she thinks those are peonies. I don't know, these flowers were already here. When we started growing but you see I got all this stuff coming up and it's all green pretty strong Sun too you can see my shadow pretty good but you know last year I put all of these perennials in and stuff and so there was nothing here I mean it was nothing grew here until in May but here it is a lot of this stuff came up in March well pretty much all of it came up in March and it's a uh, it's been quite pleasing to see all this growth in what is effectively still winter here and allowing me to actually get out and do gardening and you know get to working on homestead production 
but the point being is, is if you want to have an earlier garden you need a lot of perennials so that they'll start coming in before you even are ready to start planting seeds but this stuff comes back every year and no additional fee although I do fertilize it a couple times a year but anyhow so that's pretty much it for where we stand on the mini stead and getting ready hopefully for a good year of food production and then we'll do the canning and put it all up yeah we'll see you later okay one of my projects here for today is we made some salami so i'll be smoking it but i wanted to show you any of you out there that are running smokers i've tried this pellets here same thing you use in the pellet stoves and the big smokers and I'm just using it in this type where this just sets over the electric coil to create the smoke and I'm telling you what this has really been working good it uh, sometimes I've smoked with dry wood and hardly get any smoke this stuff always produces a lot of smoke actually you don't use a whole lot for the amount of smoke you get all I do is uh, Just about enough to cover the bottom. That right there will give me enough smoke to smoke those two. You see, it's not that much. Smoke those two salamis, which are probably three inch round and five inch long or so. Anyhow, put that down in there. This will be ready. I need to change out my drip pan. Put a clean, fresh one in there, and then I'll be ready to go. That's another project I've been doing here. So there you go. Here's the two salamis going in to be smoked. Got the clean liner in there and everything. Close her up and plug her in. About two, three hours, we'll have some pretty awesome salami. Okay, this is something that I started at the beginning of the month. This is red grape vinegar. I got three bottles of it. It's a little cloudy. It's got some sediment in the bottom, which I'm okay with because I don't pour out of the bottom. But uh, just let you know. see We've a little bit it. of. It's really good. Yeah, I use it to make yeah. my coleslaw. It makes it so creamy, and it's like wow. Well, it, and we use it any place you would normally use a red wine vinegar. We mm -hmm. use a red grape vinegar. Uh, duh. Yeah. Anyhow. Yeah. Okay, and then this is some apple peach apple sauce that I made in September. And uh, I have a hard time opening these jars sometimes. And uh, so Mike made me this little gadget. It's a piece of wood, hardwood, with a screw, flat, flat screw it's in it. It's going to be flat on the bottom of the head. I tried taper and it just slid off. I tried to nail it, just pulled the nail out. That's how tight these lids can be. So just make sure you get a screw that is flat on the bottom. And this is actually a jig a uh, Craig jig screw but preferably like brass or stainless so when you wash it it don't rust yeah. but still okay, but anyways, this yeah. is the way it works so I have to turn it to where I've got the open part of the, not where there's no threads threads and pop right open and that was so easy for me does it keep the lid in good shape yeah the lid's in real good shape it didn't bend it up it didn't do anything to it so so there's a little project to get the hubby to do for you uh, you could use round dial actually instead of square so that these little corners don't bite into your hand i don't but think it's that much pressure i'm not having it? any problem now because yeah. it's it's really really easy so there's your diy for today there you go. <laughs> have a great day <laughs>